Uh, select Hamid and notice the preview of his action options in the next room. Hamid is better suited to traverse it. So you'll see what I what I mean by why this is frustrating. So specialist. Uh, specialist of the disarm role because there's three different types of roles in all three classes so you have DPS basically you have enforcers that are like DPS um, you have enforcer tanks you have uh, silent assassins you have like other and I'll show you as I get more heroes but disarm is very important because disarm Enables him to it's like as a specialist. He's good at helping teammates in various ways that do not involve facing enemies uh, Special kills to dinker tinker and disarm mechanical objects like traps He's also one of the only characters in the game that can open up chests Which is very important because almost every mission Has chests that you want to open because you want those extra supplies. He also fights like a beast by the way He does like he actually does decent damage um, even though it's strike for 150% damage, when you level him up, he basically will run in and just like, if he gets the initiative, he'll just like slap someone down. It's it's a good way to insta-kill someone. Um, so this is, the ground route is crowded with enemies, going by the rooftop looks easier, choose your path carefully. Yeah. <coughs> the reason that they tell you to choose your path carefully is because like granted yeah you have these two options they're both gonna land you right here now in some cases uh, let's see you can look forward on on different rooms right so here you are and the I believe the optional chest is down in this room here so if you want to go get it you have to fight through these guys go through this door go through this door disarm this trap go down here and go and do this which is what we're gonna do it's really frustrating to do but it's something that we can do easy hard you know what no not with this not with this setup we're not I went back and I did this mission again last time uh, carry out a rapid attack applies instantly instantly strike for 20% damage yeah I don't really care that's a good finisher move but I'm not gonna do that a strike the enemy with a crippling blow, slowing their movements. Yep, let's go and kill this guy. If I get initiative, yeah. There you go. Hindering blow. He's gonna attack slightly slower, but I'm still slow as all heck. That was a nice critical there. Uh, <sighs> the good thing about that about that other skill, as you saw, like it didn't use my action bar, so. It basically allows me to strike for 20% damage. It's a nice like little finisher move. And it also can't be dodged and other things like that. So skill panel at the bottom of the screen is a reminder of the selected of all select all the selected hero skills. Blah. Sorry. You can press and hold on any skills for detailed information. So like I can I can hold this. Um your character has their own kind of like general stats. So this thing right here. More shorter discipline and training allows them to draw draw upon a second win. The skill does not recharge and applies instantly. Healing lasts until end of mission. Health is increased by 20, 25% and restored 20% health over 6 ticks. Which basically means like, every time you do an action that's a singular tick. Uh, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this on Tariq, he needs to heal. And it doesn't uh, re regenerate. You have Hamid, uh, expertly crafted plates allows any party member superior protection at the cost of mobility. Health and defense are increased on the selected party member by 10%. Dodge and critical chances are reduced to 0% to account for this. This lasts for 10 ticks. I can use this on Tariq, and I could send Tariq through this room with the, that in mind. Because now he's got like more health and whatever, and he could definitely battle his way through this room. It would suck, it would, but I could do it. Um, Aguilar doesn't actually have any skill like that. His his outside thing is basically free running. Free run through the environment with agility increased by 10%, which agi agility basically increases your success of, of free running. Extra actions, lift. Use a construction lift to propel yourself to higher ground. Zip line, navigate a zip line to reach a lower part of the environment. This will come in handy much later on when you kind of get shafted at certain things. Uh, who's better at this? Oh, uh, there's a- oh, there's, here's the chest. Uh, my apologies. I thought it was a floor trap. Alright, so notice. Four chances to lockpick this chest at 60%. I have a 6% chance to literally beat this chest open with my fist 
and hope to get it. The more dexterity you have, I believe, it increases that. I haven't really found out what is the key factor to increasing this, but it even adding like one point does not equate to 1% increase. So you have to have a lot of strength to basically like, like man fight a chest open. All right, I'm gonna see if I can disarm this trap. The bright side is that even if you fail, you can just continually try it. Oh, look, I succeeded. Woohoo. Uh, this is okay. So this is the end. This is where this is. Thankfully, there was only one. Like this is one of the training missions, so you can you can kind of th they give you the option of oh, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? And this is this is not a trend that the game keeps up. So. Later in the game, it's like, oh, do you want to do this? Oh, okay, you're going to suffer X, Y, and Z for doing it that way. Uh, I'm just going to kill you. Just basically, like, bash your skull in with this axe. Mind you, this is why using his skills are important, because I'm not healing anymore. Uh, but I was healing, and I basically have my tank for the rest of this mission. Which ends right now, but... Again, I digress. All right, cool, we recovered some supplies. Mind you, we are at the 26 minute mark. We are still in the tutorial doing the starting missions of the game. Oh damn, I didn't get to look at the Into Darkness thing. I missed it the last two times and I missed it the third time again. Um, but I believe that's just what the name of the, uh, the name of this particular quest tree is. So, like, as you see this little, like, this, this, like, uh, kind of arm, this, you know, flex, meaty flex. These are, like, the standard missions in Region 1. So, I have 21 stars, basically seven missions to complete at three stars apiece. All right, let's see. Completing a standard mission, finish this objective. Yes, it did. Leveled up my brotherhood. I got intel room and this. It will tell you this every single time you level up, by the way. The reason the Brotherhood level raises the max level cap of all heroes, allowing you to train them further. You're like, yes, I know, I'm not an idiot, but thank you for treating me like one. Uh, complete story missions. Yeah, we're going to get back to that. We're not going to do that right now. Uh, return to the HQ. So every region has multiple types of missions on them. There's like loot quests, there's standard missions, there's uh, legacy missions, there's a bunch of different stuff and it'll, it'll, I'll kind of get into that as we get there. Uh, going on missions tend to tire us out, let's build in living quarters so we can rest and regain our strength. This, that sentence that he just gave you, where he says, going on missions tend to tire us out. Um actually implies a lot more than you would have thought. So it re regenerates health over time as they're on missions. Pinch or double tap. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to double tap. We should now construct an intelligence room. Analyze Templar activities. This gives you these, which is what you need to go on missions. If you don't have any, you can't go on missions. Uh, cost me 250 lumber. And this, uh, one thing that, so like I just got 105 of that. Intel resources are used to launch missions. Assigning a hero to the intelligence room will speed up Intel acquisition. Uh, who am I supposed to assign to the- Oh yeah, I'm supposed to assign him because he's apparently the best at gaining Intel. This room caps at 45. You can gain Intel past what your cap is. So if you just leave him there, he will acquire and max out the room. Uh... And then you can you can basically gather it. So like let's say I was at 102, and then I max out the room at 45. I could I can technically go above that. At least I used to be able to. I have to try it out again since this is the newer version, but it might still work the same way. Access a legacy mission. Complete it to acquire its unique type of rewards. Legacy missions, and and I'll, it'll show you right now. So drop chance guaranteed for Aguilar to get eight, uh, whatever, eight of these, eight DNA points. You'll see why this why this game is bottlenecked in a very annoying way. Also, this this legacy missions require eight or higher uh, use of these intel points, which is 
just like not cool. It's not cool. You know, I was actually I was gonna do this now, but we're what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna stop this here. We're gonna go into uh, legacy missions on the next on the next episode. Uh, yeah, you know what? You know what? we're gonna go through this. And we'll sw we'll split it a little bit differently. We'll, we'll just split it a little bit differently. All right, so. With, with legacy missions, here's here's the caveat, right? So legacy missions, you get DNA, uh, you get DNA points, and you can rerun missions to get DNA points later on, and it tells you like what the chances of getting it through running the mission. Uh, that doesn't mean that's what you get from beating the mission. That's what you get from these chests in the mission, usually. Uh, let's see, what what path do I want to take in this one? Oh god, this is a- yeah, I forgot, this mission was a, a bear. Just starting the game, and this mission was a straight up bear. Uh, Aguilar, we're gonna go with Aguilar for this. Uh, we're gonna go for the assassination attempt, because I have the highest percent chance. Knowing me, this is gonna go terribly, and I'm not gonna assassinate this guy. Oh, okay, never mind. I did fail that my first time going through this. There's no buttons to press or anything like that, so that's what makes this really annoying. Uh, Alright, we've got this. I'm not gonna... I don't need to hold through this. Make sure that you select the right person for the room, because this game is very punishing in the fact that if you don't... If you don't select the right person, you can't change who you pick after you've won into the room. So, like, I needed... I needed Hamid to open this chest. If I didn't select Hamid and I selected Tariq or Aguilar, that's it. You're like straight up shit out of luck, and that's it. You 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 you're done. You miss the chest because his six percent chance to punch that chest open is not gonna happen. I have yet to have that happen with anyone. Oh my god! All right, so you saw that right there. This is this is something it's important to note. So. When you try to do an action, like free running or something else, if you fail it, like I had a 70 some odd percent chance to succeed it. When you fail it, you get a failure, you take damage, you can either fall off it entirely. Uh, in this instance, I don't think you could because I don't think there's anything below me. Um, but you basically could fall off it entirely or... Uh, I mean... Look at this. Look at look at these failure attempts. And then if you fail, like you fail a combat check, like you lose initiative. And then that's that's terrible because now I'm just gonna like take a buttload of damage. Which I really didn't want to do, but whatever. Ugh. Uh okay. This is actually something that I really like. One thing that I do not like about this, so I have an 83% chance to run up and assassinate this guy, right? Boom. Alright, he's dead. I have an 80% chance to basically hide back here, throw some coins, and throw this. With 80% chance, you're failing these assassination attempts. Like, it's... This game's dice rolling is brutal. And, like, this mission I probably won't get three stars on now because I'm gonna need Aguilar to run through different... Um, uh, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Like, I need Aguilar to run through a certain room, and, like, if I don't have... If I don't have enough speed running for that, like, I'm... Dude, you snuck up on him, and you lost the initiative. Oh, it's because I used the wrong skill. Oh, rest in pepperoni is me. Alright, so Tariq's a badass and just does crazy damage. Alright, so this is the room where we could get shafted. Because Aguilar may die, and this is not going to be good. Uh, this only applies to him. Damn. Whatever, just use it on yourself, Tariq. Alright, we're going to try this. So I have four more chances at this. I'm going to try to do this. Hopefully the game takes pity on me. Alright, 68%. I find that the, the dice rolling in this game is really, really unreliable. Like, as you saw, I had, you know, an 83% chance to assassinate that other guy, but I have a 68% chance to land this, and I hit all four of these. That's it. Good. They're beautiful. And mission over. 
had Aguilar died, you lose two stars. When when one person dies, you lose a star for that. Or like if you don't complete all the objectives, you, you lose a star. So this is, this is where I got. We got DNA fragments from this. Right? Notice this. Notice this. Let's see if it'll actually let me explore to this point first. Uh, yeah, I can't select any other missions right now. It's going to force me going back this. Completing a legacy mission yields DNA fragments for a hero. Collect DNA fragments to unlock new heroes to recruit. That's not actually how that works in that in this particular manner, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit. Every legacy mission rewards DNA fragments of different heroes. Look for the ones you want and play them every day. You can play certain missions multiple times a day. It tells you like, oh, this is attempt um, three of three, one of three, whatever. I think I had to. Oh God, that's so uncomfortable. You know when you have to sneeze and the sneeze doesn't go through? That's, that's what's just, oh. <sighs> Eh, that's what just happened. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> Alright, so we have this this cool cube. Aguilar. And then I get this guy. Maximo. Maximo Barossa. Maximo is terrible. And it's because he's common. Like, so this is what I got from the mission, right? I got, like, three of this person, Constanza. She's, uh... Shadow and navigation, he's shadow and stealth, and then this fabric is like building materials you'll need for other stuff. Uh, would I like to receive? Yeah, sh let me know when Animus Cubes are ready, because I'm going to need them for like 10,000 things. Ready now to begin our fight against the Templar threat. It's time to learn more about Torquemada's plans. Um, you know what? We're going to go into the story mission, so we're actually going to do this in the next one. But thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, if you like the video, like the introduction to this. Um, I'm going to be doing a full speed run or a full playthrough of this game, and then I'll do a speed run through the game later on if, if it really comes down to it. Uh, we're going to kind of gauge it. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for coming out. If you liked the video, drop a like and a comment below. Uh, tell me what you guys think about it so far. Tell me if you like the game, if you're interested in it, um, if you're willing to play it. Uh, connect with me on social media. All of the links will be in the description below. You guys can hit me up there. I'm active on Discord on a daily basis. Check my Twitter. I'm posting on it on almost daily basis. Instagram, still working on it, but we're going to get there. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for coming out, and I will see all of you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.